Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, Steve Lav here. I'm working on uh, a, a video there for my hydronic series. Um, we'll be talking about expansion tanks. Uh, and then I'm going to go over different parts of the, uh, you know, um, I'll go over circulators on another video and water feeders and relief valves. And I'll just do kind of like videos on different parts of the system. So we're talking about expansion tanks on a hydronic heating system. Now, when you heat water up, it expands. So you need to have an expansion tank. Um, on the residential, there's a couple of different kinds. There's uh, the new style the expansion tanks that have a rubber diaphragm in them. Okay, and as you heat the water up, it expands in that rubber diaphragm. When you take that tank off, there should never be any water in that tank if it's a diaphragm tank. Now, they got number 30 tanks and number 60 tanks. Them are the two most common. Most of the time, you can go with a number 30, which is a standard size for a small house. You get into a big house or a house that has a lot of cast iron radiators or a big volume, you're going to need to go with a number 60 tank. Yeah, so the number 60 tank is the bigger of the two. Um, they do have floor-mounted tanks. If you have an, if you got a real big system, yeah, sometimes you got to go with, with big tanks. They're like, um, you know, 80s and 120s. There's all different size expansion tanks. But for residential, you know, in commercial applications, there's a lot of different tanks. A lot of them don't have diaphragms. Now, some of the old residential tanks that were up against in the in the joists up on top, they never had diaphragms on. It was just a steel tank. And every couple of years, you, you got to drain the water out of them to let air back in for the, for the thing to work. Um... A couple of them, I got special drains that let air in, so you could drain the system out. I got, I go on over a couple of that in this video. Um, now, if you have one of those that just has a boiler drain on it, okay, you shut the ball valve off to the expansion tank that shuts that. It's like a half inch line going to that old expansion tank, and you're gonna hook a hose to that thing. If it don't have any way to let air in as you drain the water out, that thing will hold a vacuum. It takes you hours and hours and hours to try to. You never get the water out of it. So, um, there's different apparatus that I'm going to go over in this video that, you know, lets air in um, to that old expansion tank to let the water out quick. Um, them, them are good tanks. Some of them old tanks were good. Every couple of years, though, you gotta, you gotta drain it out. So that's the deal. Whenever you have a relief valve blowing on a wall, on a, on a heating system, the first thing you gotta check is the expansion tank um you know is it full of water the diaphragm type might might be bad um that's something you need to check so uh like i said i'm gonna do a little series and i'm gonna go over the different parts of the system that i find um and what i do when i come across different situations so hopefully this video helps a couple of guys hey guys thanks for watching all right guys on this one we're going to talk about expansion tanks on the hydronic system um, this one right here is a number 30 expansion tank, which is like the most common. Usually anything that would be, you know, um, a small house would take a number 30 tank. Now anything that's got big cast iron radiators or anything that's, you know, on a higher end of an inch and a quarter um, size main, uh, you might have to go to a number 60 tank, which is this one right here. Sometimes the number 30 tank is, is questionable. I would go with a 60. Now this is the number 15 tank, which I don't use very often. This is the one I stock in the truck, the 30. But the 60 sometimes has to be used. And they also make a floor model tank like this, a 120, uh, for you know if you have a problem situation. Uh, I have used them in the past. You could use something like this. This is more or less like a well tank. But this one here, I believe this is a 120. Um, you know, Amtrol makes makes well tanks also. But this is this is all hydronic tanks. Um, this would be like for a commercial application, this bigger tank. But for residential, the 30 and the 60 are the ones you really need to be concerned about. Boiler, see boiler, boiler system expansion tanks. Amtrol, that's a good one. Um, they have watts. They got different kind, but I usually like to go with Amtrol myself. All right, guys. This one right here is a number 15, which is the smaller tank right here. Which I don't really use that one. This one right here is the one I use the most, the number 30. 
number 30 tank and then here's us number 60 that we talked about right here here's the 60 that we talked about right here um, here's the floor mounted one right here this would be for a big big ass boiler right here I'll tell you more of a commercial style um, there's a bigger tank right here 20 gallon these are all expansion tanks for boilers with the size of this one so you know it depends on your application what you would use there's all different kinds but the 30 and the 60 the most common is all different different brands here this is on eBay now on this right here this is basically what you would use if you had an old style tank that's up against the sandwich that doesn't have the rubber diaphragm and you got tappings coming off the bottom I'm gonna show you some of them tanks but what this does is you put a boiler you screw this in the bottom okay you put a boiler drain on here and you got this little brass cap here that gets plugged in here so when you shut the the ball valve off to drain that tank every couple of years because there's no diaphragm and you gotta let air back in it if you don't have something like this in there what will happen is um the whole of vacuum you'll never be able to get the water out glug 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 it'll never come out so what you do is you open the you put a hose on a boiler drain that goes in here then you take this little plug out, and what happens is it lets air in here to the top of the tank to drain the tank out. It's a tank drainer. they got different styles, but some of them have a... You've got to take the little screw out at the end of the handle. There's different styles, but I'm going to show you some of these. These are, these are important. Let me see if I can find a tank, and I'll show you what kind of tank these go in. Alright, guys. There's another one of those drains for the expansion tanks that I was talking about. Basically, what you do is, you know, you put a hose on this thing. You got the shut off to the expansion tank off. There should be a ball valve or a globe valve or whatnot. And what you do is you put a hose on this, and you take this little plug out here, and that'll let air in to the top of the tank, so you could drain the water out of the tank. Some of the other ones will have will have a screw on the end here that you take off and uh, it'll let air right up a tube there's a couple of different ones Let's see if I could find some more I got some of my scrap I'm just I got all kinds of stuff in here and some of my junk I gotta take some of this stuff to the scrappy. Now one other thing about tanks, if you see a tank that's got a three-quarter tapping on the top, they make tanks for domestic water um, tanks and they also make them for boilers. Now on a boiler you're always gonna see you're always gonna see a half inch tap on a boiler uh, expansion tank. On the ones for the domestic water, they're gonna be three-quarter. Okay? And they're going to be a little bit different. They're designed to work with more pressure. Um, if you ever have like a double check valve on your water line, you need to put um, an expansion tank on a, the, the water heater, the gas water heater. Because if there's a check valve on a water line coming in, when you, when you heat the water up, it's going to expand. Same thing with that. You know, they don't have them up my way too often because we don't use double check valves on the water mains coming in. But sometimes do. So that's another thing. That's on the plumbing end of it, but they do make these. If you see that three-quarter tap, that's a that's a tank that can withstand a lot more pressure. It's designed for uh, domestic water use. All right, guys. Just so you know the differences, this um, here we go. Water heater expansion tanks. These are designed for domestic water. Um, this one here is for a, a boiler, but a lot of these are like right here. Uh, water heater. Water heater expansion tank. They would have a three-quarter tap on them. They're designed 
they're designed to take the water, the uh, the pressure from the domestic water. It has, a, has a big tap on it, three quarter tap right there. Just so you know, there is a difference between the two. I've seen some guys do videos. They had a um, put a regular boiler expansion tank on, on a system, and it kept blowing, and they didn't know why. Well, that was the reason. It's not designed for that. There's different applications. You have to get the proper tank for your application. But remember, if it's a three quarter three quarter pipe size, most likely it's um for domestic water designed for more pressure. Now you tell them what you want at the supply house and they get you what you, you know what you what you need. This one here would have the half inch tap. This would be for a boiler. Uh, it's only running on, you know, 12, 15 pounds pressure. Um, the one for the water heater, you're looking at probably 60 pounds pressure. So it's a big difference in pressure. All right, guys, we're talking about expansion tanks here on this one. Uh, this is the number 30, 30 watts. Now what happens when you heat the water, this is what happens. There's a, there's a rubber diaphragm in here, okay? Now, when this when this thing's off, there should be no water in this tank at all. A lot of times, if these tanks, these rubber diaphragms will let go inside here. Okay, four or five years down the road, this thing will, will let go. And um, you find the relief valve blowing. So what you do is, sometimes you can tap on this and you can hear it's solid, full of water. Um, water will, the boiler will heat up, build up pressure and blow the relief valve at 30 pounds. Um, the only way to really, if you've got a problem with a relief valve, the best thing to do is drain the boiler out, take this tank off. If there's any water in it at all, this diaphragm should push all this water out when you take the tank off. If there's any water in that tank at all, the thing's junk. Now, they've got other expansion tanks that go up against the ceiling. I don't have any more. I took, all my, I took a lot of my stuff to the, to the uh, dump, so I don't have any more of the other tanks. I was looking around here, but... I wish I would have did some video on it before I took all the stuff to the dump. I don't think I have it anymore. I don't think I have any in here.